The writer of the script, uh, Katie Dippold, who we know from Upper Citizen Brigade, but who is from Freehold Township, New Jersey, I yes, think, she went to Rutgers. Yes, she is. Um, she was on set every day, so she, they were just constantly and she's going an back and forth. Like, yeah. She was writing new lines for her, you know, so it's not clear exactly where the line is. Collaborative. But certainly, Melissa makes everything she says, says Says? Says? Is that correct? I don't know. I Everything she says uh, come out of her, that comes out of her mouth sounds like it's coming out for the first time. Like yeah. That's her, a big gift of hers. It's yeah, like, yeah. it all sounds so natural. You know? Yeah, and that is, I mean, besides the you know, profanity that she likes to use. She spins profanity in a special way. You know, no, I mean, she's like, creative. She's very creative with her use yeah. of profanity. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. A lot of it's a gift. It's you know? a gift. Um, I kinda, when I saw the preview, I kind of felt... I'm not gonna lie. I kind of feel bad for Sandra Bullock. So I was like, "There's no way that she can hold up." And yes, but she was, she was awesome. She was, she was almost like Amber, she was right on the same this? level as, you as Sandra said? Bullock. I mean, she. Was, I agree. So well, you forget it's it's been a while, but you got to remember that she comes from comedy. Sandy Bullock, her breakthrough is Speed, and she is the comic relief, and she's brilliant in that movie. And I also think that you know. Yes, typically in this comedic formula, it would be said, if you had to break it down, that she's the straight man. Well, the straight man does a lot of work, a lot of heavy lifting, and is really, really, really funny if they're doing their job right. Yeah, like, in our partnership, Ron and Beverly, I'm the straight man. And I'm the funny one. And I'm the funny one. And I'm the funny one. So, so it's See, weird. And can't can't get that. And be the funny And then it's one. like, why that's can't we just have so Beverly? So but, you know, I can't do that and leave her behind one? That's me. So, yeah, there it is. I think it's either, like, like we were saying, we either play Jewish mothers or junkies. Those are nothing it's in between. pretty good range. Pretty good. Always yeah. Boston, from Boston. Yeah. Boston's <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, and it was really fun. Yeah, and it was, a, I mean, you could do a lot more in a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd compare, you know, features are features. Features right. are, you know, a page and a half in, mm -hmm. you know, 17 hours. But yeah. you know what the funny thing is? That because you do so much improvising on this movie, mm -hmm. for it. it's a big, huge studio movie. It's a big budget movie. When we did The Real Housewives of South Boston, it was literally like a camera in somebody's apartment that they lent <laughs> you. <laughs> Maybe got a start. And I think it felt the same way. Like yeah. it was just as much fun and it mm -hmm. felt just mm -hmm. as intimate. And we felt like we had just as much control over our performances in uh, The Heat as we did in Real Housewives of South Boston. And that's such a credit to Paul Feig, the director. Who trusts improvisers. Mm -hmm. Because he just, like, it's not about any of the nonsense. It's just about, like, making the funniest thing you can and collaborating on that. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like you get a bunch of really funny people together, you let them do their thing, and he really kind of sets those goalposts and, we, and lets us, like, gives us a cage to play in. Yeah. Did you feel a little intimidated, though, thinking about the success of Bridesmaids and thinking, well, are, are we going to be as funny? Is this going to be... You know, did, is that, did you go on the set thinking that? Like, well, that, that was a comedy really that really, really, really made it. I think we're part of the same club to be able to get to do what we do. Yeah. I think we were so happy to be asked uh, to do it. And we've known Paul for many, for several years. We, okay. we did a um, pilot with him in 2009. Our show, Ron and Beverly, is a stage show in Los Angeles and a podcast on Earwolf and on iTunes. And... We uh, translated it from a stage show to a to a half hour comedy for Showtime, and Paul directed that, and so that's how we met him. So then we've kind of been collaborating with him since then, and we did a show in the UK that aired in the fall. Uh, we do it. Our show is a talk show where we interview celebrities, and so Paul produced that, and so it was kind of like the stakes in the. You'd think the stakes are really high because what comedian wouldn't, or especially a female comedian, mm. wouldn't want a part in Paul's next movie after Bride's after Night. Right. But because we know him so well, I think that there wasn't that anxiety of going into it. Though I remember the day before, like the first day, because I don't didn't know Melissa well, I'd met her once, and Sandra I didn't know at all, I was really nervous about like how much to do or how little to do, because it's not your movie, so you just don't know... You don't know how someone's going to be on set. You don't know if they're going to kind of be like, um, I'm going to be the funny one in this scene, and you better right. just like, like if you're take a back seat. It's better than their yeah. improvising. It's but she's like, such a generous performer, and she's so interested in everything being the best it can be that she just like it was like playing tennis with a pro. You know, it was just it was so much fun. She was. They were. They both made us feel completely like at home, and we could do whatever we wanted, and you know, it was great.